Oh my goodness, can I just say, I am taken aback because right now, I'm watching these highlights of Carolina Edmonton, and Stuart Skinner's literally windmilling out there making these saves. Okay, never mind, Shane Goss Despair just scored. Okay, that was a highlight. It's not even live. Anyways, the reason I'm watching Edmonton and Carolina highlights, which have now switched over to Pittsburgh Calgary is because the Vancouver Canucks game has just concluded. And even though three of my favorite teams were in action today, in fact, all 32 teams were in action today during the NHL's frozen frenzy night, I wanted to, I had to make a video about the Vancouver Canucks beating the Chicago Blackhawks. We can talk about the Canadians some other day because, man, they suck. We can talk about the Islanders and the Wings some other day because, man, that game was boring. But Vancouver, Chicago, oh boy, I'm going to say this game was business as usual for the Vancouver Canucks, taking it to a Chicago Blackhawks team that, on paper got significantly better over the offseason. It's no longer just Bedard. Now you've got Taylor Hall, Tyler Bertuzzi, Andreas Athanasiu, Alec Martinez, a lot of extra guys that will be helping this team. But unfortunately, it's not enough. As the Vancouver Canucks come into town on the last game of their four-game road trip and defeat, destroy the Chicago Blackhawks 6-3. Now, prelims, I wanted to get into this right before we talked about the game, because heading into this, I was intrigued as to how my fantasy pickups would be doing. I don't really want to make this whole video about my fantasy team, but I did pick up Kiefer Sherwood at the drop of midnight on Monday, because that's when the Yahoo League allowed us to get some more ads and utilize them, so I put Caden Gooley on the IR and immediately picked up Sherwood, because hey, the guy had a whole bunch of hits in the prior two games. He was starting to score goals, and in this one, guess what? Kiefer Sherwood has an absolutely fantastic fantasy-related game. Not only did he score two assists in the first period to get things going, but he also had six hits in the first period. He ended the game off with 12 total hits. Who does that? Who in their right mind goes out there and rams into guys 12 times in one 60-minute hockey game? Not even a 60-minute game. Kiefer Sherwood had 15 minutes of time on ice in this one, and he had 12 hits, 3 shots, and 2 assists. He almost got a hit a minute. That's crazy, man. This guy's a huge, huge, huge pickup in my fantasy league, and I am so fantastically grateful that I snagged him up. In fact, I was kind of boasting in the group chat, you know, because I picked up a few guys on Monday. I picked up Sherwood. I picked up Jacob Middleton, who ended up scoring three points in today's contest, too. So I'm very happy with that. But I was like, hey, Kiefer Sherwood, he's doing some great things. And I started to get trade proposals for him. I told y'all this already, but this is a keeper league. And I took over a team that was dead last last year in this league. So the keepers that I had, I mean, I had Connor Bedard, so he was in my lineup today, and I was interested in seeing what he'd be able to do in today's contest against Vancouver. Fortunately for Vancouver, unfortunately for my fantasy team, though, Bedard was left off the score sheet. No goals, no assists, no power play points, but he did get some shots, and he did get a few hits in there, too. I did think the Vancouver Canucks did a fantastic job at just limiting the quality of chances and the volume of chances that Connor Bedard was able to get in this one. So good on Vancouver for sticking to their assignments. Anyways, 6-3 to three is the final score here, and the game opened up right away with some immediate offense from the Vancouver third line. This featured Danton Heinen, the aforementioned Kiefer Sherwood, and Teddy Bluger, who scored just 21 seconds into the game. The puck finds itself back over to Philip Pronick at the point, who ends up playing it over to Sherwood. Sherwood walks in, across to Bluger, into the middle once more for Danton Heinen, who walks across the slot and fires at home past Peter Mrazek. 1-0 Vancouver, that's Danton Heinen's first goal as a Vancouver Canuck, second assist on the season for Bluger, and second assist on the season for Sherwood. Great goal to get Vancouver on the board early. Vancouver then, just a few minutes later, had themselves a power play, and this is where JT Miller, who was a game-time decision, by the way, decided to convert. 
because Miller and Hughes were passing it back and forth. Hughes eventually took a shot. It deflected off the end boards, and then the ricochet popped over to Miller, who was right there at the goal mouth, who puts the puck in at a tight angle. Now, Connor Garland got the secondary assist here, but if you look at the video, I mean, the last three, four puck touches were all Hughes and Miller, and Hughes and Miller, they were just passing it back and forth amongst each other. Connor Garland just happened to be the next pass in that line that wasn't a Miller or a Hughes pass, so he kind of got a secondary assist just for standing around and setting up a play passes and passes and passes ago before he actually touched the puck, so good on Garland for getting a secondary assist there. 2-0 Vancouver, but the Blackhawks then strike back three minutes later. It's Ryan Donato off of a pretty good play, I would say. Carson Soucy rimmed it around the boards, and it was picked up by Alex Vlasic. He sent it back down low. Dickinson out in front for Donato. Unfortunate giveaway there from Soucy. He's just trying to rim it around to clear it, but there was nobody on the opposite side to pick the puck up. Besser had to chase for that one. It's what allowed Vlasic to play it down for Dickinson in the first place. Good puck movement, good shot there from Donato in tight. It's going to be difficult to stop that if you're Lankanen. But the Canucks then got themselves a two-goal lead once again as Danton Heinen gets his second of the game. This was at the halfway mark of the first period, so you're kind of seeing these goals are coming pretty quickly. Kiefer Sherwood behind the Chicago net plays it off the boards back to the point for Phil Horonic. He shoots it towards the goal. It deflects off a few things, and Danton Heinen is right there on the doorstep to put the garbage in the basket. He ends up making it 3-1, Kiefer Sherwood gets a second assist in 10 minutes of game time, and Phil Horonic gets on the board there too. However, there were two more goals scored in the first period, the first one by Taylor Hall, making it a 3-2 game, Chicago bringing themselves back within one. This one was assisted by Connor Murphy, he played it into the middle. Tyler Myers had a really good opportunity to take the puck after Murphy touched it up and just walk it out, but the puck skipped over his stick, which is what allowed Taylor Hall to pounce on it and just shoot, beat Lankin in short side, and give the Blackhawks their second goal of the game. However, that's not all she wrote, because with five minutes left in the first, the Canucks restored their two-goal lead once again, as Connor Garland ends up scoring a really nice play here too. Hughes goes over to Miller, he gets it on goal, Pedersen touches it up in the crease, and then Connor Garland is also there to put that rebound in. A lot of rebounds. Just kind of throwing the puck on goal and waiting for somebody to touch it up, those kinds of goals were going in in this game here. And Connor Garland gets the 4-2 marker for Vancouver, beating Peter Morazic. The next few goals are actually scored in the third period. There was no goal action in the second in this one, only the first and the third. The third period opened up with a Brock Besser goal halfway through. It was a power play marker. Hughes goes over to Miller. He shoots it towards the goal and is tipped by Brock. Just a textbook tip on goal there. Very nice play. Very nice exchange, too, from Hughes and Miller. These two guys manning the point? Unstoppable. Totally unstoppable. That made it 5-2. Pia Sutar then made it 6-2 about 20 seconds later or so off of an offensive zone faceoff. Nils Oman wins the puck back over to Eric Bronstrom, who tosses it towards the goal. And once again, it's tipped by Suter. He's there on the doorstep to put it in the open cage. It kind of deflected off of Athanasiu, which is what allowed Suter to take it and shoot it with a very wide open net. But that's the 6-2 goal. Tyler Bertuzzi then scores on a 5-on-3 power play to make it 6-3. The rebound was out on the side, and Kevin Lankinen could not touch it up. It's a very unfortunate play for him, but hey, it's a 5-on-3. What are you going to do? The Vancouver Canucks had themselves six goals, six very nice goals in this one. A lot of the same formula following through in this offensive package. Just get the puck to the goal, and you'll have somebody there on the rebound or somebody there on the tip. Suter. Besser, Danton Heinen, all doing the same thing. JT Miller, he had the rebound off the end boards. Lots of running and gunning offense from Vancouver in this one. And maybe because it's Chicago, they're able to do that with impunity. They were able to do that consistently. I, for one, don't really care how they go in. As long as they get the goals, that's what I care about. And for Kiefer Sherwood, for him to produce as much as he did, makes me a very happy camper for picking him up in fantasy the other day, too. So, lots to like here out of this game for Vancouver. The penalty kill was really solid as well. They only allowed one goal in the 5-on-3, which I'm not going to get upset about because it's 5-on-3. But at the end of the day, the Vancouver Canucks beat Chicago 6-3. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Trash Rolls 99. And bye.